It doesn't take much for people to help make a change. And for Ian and Shaw McGraw, two brothers here at CHS, their want to make a change has sent them to a very special faraway place. I've never really thought I'd be doing anything amazing. I thought the greatest I'd amount to was get a job, you know, support my family, maybe move out of San Pasquale. But, you know, really, it's amazing. It, uh, I've really realized that you can be a difference at a young age, and I'm only 16. And I'm going to Africa four times this summer. It's really shaped my life, and I want to make a bigger difference, you know, not even in just Africa, all over the world. The first trip, we we're kind of like, okay, Mom, we'll come. Like, you know, we'll do it. You know, okay, the Lord's sending us, you know, and we go. And really, it changed our lives. I've, I've nev we've never been the same. But this trip to Africa was no usual summer vacation. Every 14 seconds, a child is orphaned due to HIV AIDS. So fighting that pandemic, we come alongside orphanages, get the kids in these orphanages. We plant gardens. We uh, fortify the houses so they're more than just four walls and a roof. Uh, get electricity, plumbing, um, farming, and stability. We went with a, a group called Heart for Africa. It's a nonprofit organization, um, and it works in Malawi, Kenya, and Swaziland. They work with uh, planting self-sustainable gardens, meaning that um, we're not just giving them a hand out, we're giving them a hand up so they can you know, feed themselves and learn to live. And um, they also just work with uh, education and uh, trying to teach them so they can get out of the cycle of poverty. And to help make a change, you don't have to travel all the way to Africa. I can help in South Africa, I can help in the United States. So I've been working at homeless shelters and even just with, uh, you know, group events, just uh, with youth, you know, the people that are not even homeless, but just like struggling. Besides the physical part, we're also there emotionally because, I mean, all the kids we're seeing there, you know, they've all lost their parents and the only family they know is, is dead. So we're there also to just comfort and, you know, be there for the community. I never thought we'd get all that work done, but it's really, you know, there's like hundreds of people that go on these trips and a lot of the fundraising for your actual trip goes to putting towards the tools and the, and the work we might need to hire while we're in Africa. And so really, it's, if you go there, you'll be quite amazed. You get you know, a couple hundred people and a whole bunch of Swazis and you can get something done. It's really cool. After all their hard work, the end result was very rewarding. At the end of the week, we got to move the kids into the orphanage um, and it was almost completed, but the garden was done. And uh, it was really amazing. I got to hold this little baby. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, if I think about, you know, how I spent my life living, you know, as a baby, I lived in a comfortable house, you know, with a crib and everything. And, you know, this little baby doesn't even have, you know, they don't even have diapers. If, if any of this has touched your hearts, please just come up to me and Ian and ask. Uh, please just make a difference and, you know, try and see what you can do to help here locally and globally. You know, if we consider ourselves loving and compassionate people, we can't just talk about it. We got to show it. Take risks but safe ones. Reporting for CHS TV, I'm Krista Mortland. Um, my favorite memory actually was last year, um, we had built a large, planted a large scale garden um, for this new orphanage that we were working with called Emmanuel. And there was over something like 60 babies that they had to take care of with like two people um, and no diapers. Um, and so that was pretty crazy coming in and out. I didn't personally go to work with the babies, but um, I, I planted the garden and, you know, worked there all week. And at the end of the week, we got to move the kids into the orphanage um, and it was almost completed, but the garden was done. And uh, it was really amazing. I got to hold this little baby. And, you know, it's uh, if I think about, you know, how I spent my life living, you know, as a baby, I lived in a comfortable house, you know, with a crib and everything. And, you know, this little baby doesn't even have, you know, they don't even have diapers. And um, it was beautiful because I got to hold this little baby and I, and I walked her through the garden. And I just remember telling her that, you know, this is going to be your home. This is where you'll be able to get a chance to live. You know, and you don't have to be another statistic of Swaziland. You can survive. And so that's pretty cool. I really, I really enjoyed that, just holding that baby and being able to share with her, you know, hey, you're going to survive. You're going to make it. So that's pretty cool. Mine was a little bit on a lighter note. Um, I mean, there's so many moments like that, but um, that one's super special. Uh, mine was uh, also last year, me and my buddy Jared were uh, digging fruit tree holes and uh, in African dirt, which is like rock basically. And it takes you about like two hours to dig like a, you know, a three by foot, like three by foot, a three by three uh, square foot uh, hole, five feet down basically. And then, um, you know, when we got this guy from Kenya who helps at the Tumaini Orphanage, and he came and he was digging these fruit tree holes like in two seconds flat. You know, he was just like, he was like, we were finishing with our first hole and he was on his third, like, and he was just super hardcore Kenyan working man. And uh, he had created his own microclimate in Kenya because of his hard work, like putting lava rock in different areas and being able to plant like stuff that was never planted there. And so while we were there, me and Jared were like, okay, how do we pass this time, you know, faster like this, uh, like uh, Peter Mully. And so we like, we uh, sang a song 
and like we just like made up this song about digging fruit trees and we put in Peter Mully like oh he puts us all to shame and it was super fun and uh, everyone just looked at us like we were weirdos but we had a blast and it got the job done so yes we did yeah um, we uh, we actually went on I think this last trip did we go on another one no we no we didn't but uh, these first uh, the first three times or the first two times we did and it was great uh, my favorite memory from that was, you know, we got to see lions, elephants, you know, the whole deal, and, uh, you know, in a little Jeep with rope in front of it. So, like, there's nothing, it's not Wild Animal Park, it's like there's rope and then there's lions. And so it was really cool. Um, we actually came upon a whole pack eating a wildebeest, which was like super crazy. And, like, there was this smell near the, the safari guy was like, yeah, like, you smell that and there's lions around. Like, <laughs> like don't walk away from that smell, you know. And then uh, we actually got kind of trapped because the male lion just laid down behind their car. And then the mama was eating like wildebeest with the cub chewing on the leg, like right in front of our <laughs> van or Jeep thing. And so that was kind of hairy, but uh, it was fun. And yeah, it was crazy being that close to lions. And yeah, it was a good experience. Yeah, it was It was definitely, you know, lions were probably the coolest. It was also cool seeing like giraffes and rhino. It's just, you know, it's like straight from the Lion King. You know, you never really get to see those sort of things. And it's cool to see it in person. They're big. Yeah, they're huge. They're very big. We got a friend that actually got out of the Jeep and was like, well, I kind of want to see a, Ryan, a rhino to a human comparison. And the safari guy was like, really? All right, come on. And he gets them out of the Jeep, and they stand next to the rhino. It's a wild rhino. And it's like the rhino was just like kind of staring at him like, what's wrong with you? But it was really, it was, yeah. it was fun. Yeah, take risks, but safe ones. <laughs> that was epic. Epic, epic rhino.